You're bringing the world together right now, man. <laughs> well, that's what they say about people in the Caribbean. We have a whole world in our backpack. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? That's awesome. The first, your first quote of the day is amazing. And the uh, first quote of the day almost made me do a spit take uh, <laughs> on my dog. Um, that's awesome. <laughs> Lying. That's how that's how we're gonna advertise this panel. You can carry Jorge in your backpack. Wait, with the word. I'm not even sure I understood that quote. Say it again. Say it again. Um, some people say you know that um, we we in the Caribbean or the Latinos you know bring uh, in the backpack we bring the world in our backpack. Got what him. is it? Because we are a, a clash, a mix, or a, or a dance to be more um, you know. Yeah. Uh, more Saturday morning, you know, eh, yeah. eh, of, of a thing. So, yeah. Is it so? Does that saying come from because uh, you come from everywhere and it's a diverse mix? Or is, or is that saying come from because you travel the world? Uh, or hey, no, well, it, it, the, 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 the thing, you know, which is like a poem and also it's being in, in lyrics and everything, you know, it, it's, it just means that uh, we have, yeah, it's that, it's the first. Is that mm -hmm. we are a result of all this, you know? Is the new world clashing with the old world, and the old world makes, you know, and it's all it's it's a very specific history, you know. So that's why we're very specific people. Yeah, that's awesome. Dude, that's, that's awesome, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We got some Vancouver coming, man. We got a lot of people coming. Columbus, Ohio. This yeah, is cool. This is awesome. awesome. Yeah. yeah. I can see you guys perfectly. I mean, uh, uh, yeah. This is all awesome. Mauritius. Man, Mauritius, Texas. Now, Jorge, your your hometown is Caracas. Uh, I was born in Caracas. Yeah. So <clears throat> first, uh, um, th thank you so much for having me here. This is this is awesome. Uh, I know Bobby and Trent in many levels, so it's it's <laughs> it's great. Very like I, I trust them and uh, in a very personal. But I love them too. You know. So it's we we've done many. You know many categories of, 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 of things, you know, like professional, but also we hang out a lot. So a lot of uh, dialogues are very, very honest, you know? So it's really cool. It's really cool that we're doing this, you know? And uh, I love you guys. This is great, man. This is awesome. I mean, like uh, Trent and I, we did the, well, Bowie, we all did the, uh, the talent development together. Yeah. In, in, I, yeah. yeah, I was going to say too, I, I think this is going to be fun because it's a little more, I think it'll be a little more casual. Uh, just because we've known each other for a long time, we're all friends. It's like going out and having a beer together, like at the, you know, um, like at a bar or something like that. And we can, I can, we can make fun of each other and, you know, shoot the shit a little bit. Um, I try to be more respectful to, you know, like our panelists, but I don't have to respect you, Corey. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, it, it's visceral. The respect is visceral. You, <laughs> you know, I respect you. Yeah, I love you, man. Uh, yeah, yeah. the informality, the informality is cool. Oh, Frank. Frank, Abney, dropping the bomb. What's going on, Frank? Uh, dropping hey. it. <laughs> Good morning, Frank. Hold on, let me, let me I, I feel like, I feel like uh, it'd be funny if Frank purposefully always came in late to, like, make that, like, fashionable. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he's watching, he's watching from the sidelines, and he's like, Like, okay. Ten okay, minutes. Now. <laughs> Yeah. When, when they least expect it. Jorge. 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 Luis. Jorge Luis. Buenos dias, señor Frank. Hey. Dude, that's cool that you're joining. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> this is awesome. This feels great. Uh, a yeah. lot of gratitude. And uh, there's a lot of flowers are going to be thrown uh, to you guys today because <laughs> I, I believe that I can, you know, mirror and reflect and kind of show that everyone, like, wow, this is a lot of work. This is. Cool. A lot of labor of love, guys. And because I know you, your intention is it's it's awesome. So that's that's cool. You know? Well, you know what, Jorge, we always we always talk about on these panels that it's about the people you work with, the friends you make along the way. And I mean, with you, you know, all three of us have been in the trenches with you over the years. We've been there, uh, we've been there for each other, weddings, whatever, highs, lows. Uh, so this is cool, man, because because uh, this this feels real. Yeah. Um, no, it's great catching up with you guys. Um, I think um, going uh, off of like what you uh, said, Trent, like I worked with somebody on Tangled that uh, her name is Jen Yu Nelson, 
And I would always geek out and ask her about like um, the film she worked on, on like Lion King or, um, you know, everything else. And I'm like, what was it like doing this? And what was like doing that? And she was like, um, I honestly don't remember. The only thing that I carry from film to film is like the people that I work with, you know? And she didn't even really remember what scene she did but she remembers kind of the people that she worked with uh, on from this year to this year. And I thought, oh, that's, that's really insightful, <laughs> you know, and, and really wise. And I think that's super true too, because, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I think, you know, like at the end of the day, that's what you kind of carry with you. It, it isn't, I mean, it's great to see the movies doing well, but we always kind of laugh about like those experiences that we had on like Frozen. I think this, that's the one thing we all worked on, right? Frozen and Big Hero 6? Yeah. 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 Hey. Yeah. That's our crossover. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, so, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, like, hey, so uh, let's make this about Jorge. Dude, uh, thank you for joining us, man. Um, uh, it's a pleasure to have you, you know, we're, you're good friends to all of us. And um, let's, uh, let's kind of uh, deep dive into sort of, um, you know, your kind of, makes you tick. yeah, deep dive man. <laughs> into yeah. your recent history. So you, you grew up in Venezuela, of course. And uh, uh, can you sort of, what was that like, man? Like, uh, I, I never even asked you like on a, on a personal level, like what it, what was it like growing up in Venezuela and coming to this yeah. and how you made your way? Yeah, uh, uh, which <clears throat> that was the, the question that Trent, right, you asked me. I'm gonna, mm -hmm. yeah. I was born in Caracas, but uh, I wasn't even a year and I grew up in Maracay, which is uh, by, by, the, by the sea, by the Caribbean Sea. That's why I'm so like proud and I'm like, yeah, and I display my colors about it, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, because it's, it's such a rhythm of life, you know. And again, it's a port, it's a, it's a, you know, everyone's established. And if you see the history, you see why, you know, yeah. but it's so rich. But um, first, and you said like, let's make it about Jorge. And it's, it's not just me like, no, it's not about me, but it's the truth. Like the, the reason why I'm here and I, it's pretty obvious to everyone is like, I think uh, in, in my journey, I think you can pick and choose a couple of things that you can, it can really like resonate with you, you know? Because um, I believe I'm not alone. I'm not, you know, we, we're, it's, it's a new generation of people that we are like here, you know, this, the South is getting, you know, you know it's, it's swelling, you know what I'm saying? The world, you know, is swelling, you know, but um, yeah, I, I hope it, it's, you know, it's not just about me, but uh, it's about a lot of journeys that are the same. Because I think the whole talk about today is to show and to show the bare bones that the only difference between us, between me and you guys and the people that are looking at this are just experience. That's the only, that's the key of, of knowing that, you know, there's no, no difference, you know. It's just a, it's just a we dare to, to right. change, yeah. you know. Yeah. But uh, uh, it seems that, uh, <laughs> you asked me how I was growing up to Venezuela. We go into tangents. I'm, I'm not natured by that a little bit, but it all <laughs> comes with, with purpose, you know. I always tied it down, back. But yeah, um, it, it, it's, it, was a, it was a long journey, actually. It was a, a long journey, but for me, like, like I said, I was born in Caracas, but I, was, uh, I grew up in Maracay, which is next to Choroni, you know, in a, in a lot of different flavors. And uh, the things that, you know, what kind of, you can see a lot of, uh, of, uh, of the uh, similar situation where you see uh, that, that art, being an artist or being an artist in the United States was almost impossible, you know, or, or almost being, the things that times are changing, so the discussion is changing, you know, so that this is for, for the children, you know, or, or for the future, because times are changing. But uh, um, growing up in Venezuela, I couldn't see anyone from Venezuela representing, you know, like I couldn't see like, and it was fine with me, you know, and, and, and that, 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 you know, it's, it was detached, you know, the movie was detached from my reality, you know, it was another reality, you know. It, even the, the themes, you know, that, that, that I, I saw growing up and stuff like that, it, it was, was very different. So for me, um, uh, I was exposed to all walks of cycles, walk, walks of life, you know, which is great. And I have to establish that it's just not that I grew up in there, but what, what I believe that is really special is that, it's like, and, it, and it's unfortunate because people know what, how Venezuela is right now, but it's, I go yearly over there, you know. So I have a contact and I have a, um, 
it's such a it's, it's such a current you know contact with the reality that um that, that you know i think uh, it, it's 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 tough you know and it makes me kind of like just feel still like that's what i talk venezuelan in 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 oh, because <laughs> in spanish venezuelan you hear me and it's like i just came from the from the from the airplane yesterday you know what i'm saying but uh, just yeah. to be more specific, yeah, I mean, I don't know if you want to be more, like, uh, I have to definitely be more specific about the journey academically and stuff. Yeah. But um, I think, uh, I think Jorge, maybe, maybe, um, maybe you could talk about, like, uh, your journey, you know, from Venezuela to the Bay Area, you know? Well, sure. Well, to kind of fast forward, like, I always, like, we all, that's why I, it's funny that I, you said, like, creativity is for everyone, right? And, and because I kind of mentioned it in the, how do we, should we call this? And I kind of, you know, mentioned it in, in, in both, again, continue for everyone. It, it's because, I uh, continue for everyone, but it's, it's in, in everyone, you know? So, like, what, what was the, the, the thing? Like, uh, I have creativity. I, I, I love to draw, like everyone else, you know? But uh, my journey was ignited by support, you know? I was, be, I was getting support with my family. I was really fortunate now that I'm more, that I live more and more and more. I realized how fortunate I am with the family I have, you know? And I'm not talking about support money-wise, which in here and there, the place, it was there too, you know? But uh, it was the love and the morals that you have to facilitate to someone, you know? Especially if you're so detached of the reality that you can be a participant, you know? Now with internet, you can almost see the bare bones and you can almost, see, I mean, you can see a Frank, you can see a Trent, you can see a Bowie and Jorge Ruiz, and you, you, know, can, you can relate, you know? Uh, but me growing up, it was so detached. It was John Smith, John something. I, there was no way that I, I was a participant to that. And I was okay with it because being so far in the media and the people, you start to believe that you are not, you're not part of it, you know, and it's fine. And you're cool with it. And it's not a press. You're, it's just part of, you believe it. You, 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 co you corroborate that. I'm not part of it. That's, I watch their work, you know. Anyways, I was really supported and I wanted to I study English all my life, but by myself and also here and there courses because all the literature and animation or anything I can get my hands of, a comic book or a, a drawing, um, it, it was in English. So by the 500th time that I saw the word sword in a video game or something, I'm like, ah, oh, the freaking sword. And I thought, okay. So uh, it was me, my curiosity, you know? But like I said, it was really a lot of support from my family and my surroundings of really igniting me and making me mad and raging of curiosity of being like, okay, you know, but it was, it was really ignited. You need facilitators, you know? But that's another conversation. Like we will get there later, but, uh, but, uh, but yes, like I wanna, then I wanted to be a lawyer because like I said, you're in that box, you're in the little repetitive things that mm -hmm. you don't believe that you can reprogram. And also you want to be happy. So I need to have money, you know, because the hobo painting in the square doesn't, I mean, he looks happy dancing, but he looks out of his mind too. He might be high. I don't know. <laughs> but but, but I, I couldn't see a correct role model that would be an international, you know, until I grew up and then I started seeing Cruz Diez and, you know, and I started seeing the Rivera in, in Mexico, you know, we're very different culture. But we are kind of, we're very different culture, very far geographically, but the Latinos have in common is the, is the history, you know, mm. the mix. Mm. See, tangents. I was going to be a lawyer because I believe in justice and in, in law. I was naive. Mm. I was going to end up in a lawless country, right? Which mm. we already established in Venezuela. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Established. Like, it's, that's the people. But... I was naive, I love letters and stuff like that, but then I studied English. I, I, I graduated when I was high, in, in high school when I was 15. And no university would take me because I was under 18 or something like that, so I moved to Utah. And, in, 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 because I had a, an uncle that, was like, that, that, I, that, I, that pretty much like we met there, you know, pretty much, you know? And they took me there, even though it was a different culture. For example, it was an uncle that, that uh, embraced American culture, for example. And, and he, his name was Jorge, but his name wasn't Jorge, his name was George. And it's because he's a, a conversation from a different generation, too. You can't judge him. What the heck? Your name is George. You, you lost your, your culture. But you have to understand what kind of America world we're talking about, too, you know? Because we can go in and out 
of, of the country because it depends too. You know, the reality that's right now in America is very America centric. Yeah, oppression and all that is universal for sure, but you know, America is a different phenomenon. Anyways, uh, my, my family supported me, told me, you know what? We're going to pay for that whole year of animation and, wow. and design and graphic design. That's awesome. In, in the Academy of Arts in San Francisco? In our Institute of Fort Lauderdale. It was graphic design. Then I wanted to, and I, 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 I work in the Florida Panthers and in like a, as, a, as an illustrator for like educational software companies for, for kids. And then I realized I wanted to do movies. Man. Talking about challenging the squad and quo, you know? But, but that's the thing. Like, it, if you achieve, you, 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 you can do, you know? But that's the thing. You need more role models. People don't see the, the importance of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, anyway, so. Yeah. Jorge, you know, just yeah. for a second, I don't want to tangent too much, no. but you, you just kind of glazed over that you worked for the Florida Panthers. Yes. And I got to <laughs> say that as a Canadian coming here, I meet Jorge. And Jorge, Venezuelan, knows nothing about hockey. Nothing. <laughs> and I keep, I, I'm talking about some of my favorite NHL players. And Jorge just, oh, yeah, I know them. I used to hang out with them in Florida uh, when I worked for the Florida Panthers. <laughs> I'm like, holy shit, dude. Like, yeah. just... It was crazy because I felt, that was cool. I remember that. I mean, again, we went through a lot of conversations. Like, we... I remember trying the night up with that. I, I saw the Stanley Cup and I remember being into a suit and being among all these people in hockey and I'm in money and in the, the ice. I felt like I was in the movies. Like I felt like somehow like in Mighty Dogs, like or something <laughs> that, that, that I made it, you know? But then I realized I was hot. I was in Florida. What people wear suits in Florida, it's a lie. Mm. I don't want to be part of this. So. Mm. I mean, maybe I'm, again, it's, it's a lie for me because all the things that I'm saying, disclosure big time, it's yeah. my opinion. That's it. So it, it, I remember hanging out with Stanley Cup and I remember like I made it. And then I'm like, no, man, I mean, I'm still young. I can't. So I got into a huge debt and uh, I moved to San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And I drove to San Francisco and I go into the Academy of Art University. So Jorge, you could have, like, you could have stayed in Florida. You could, I mean, you had... You had a job, you know, you could have stayed there, but you decided, like, I'm going to keep pursuing. I'm going to jump across the coast, put some more money into this, and just just try to do it, right? Yeah. Yeah, they yeah, actually what, were. You, you, said, you said you wanted to do movies. Like, what, what was, the, what was the, the, the spark to, to make you want to do that? Like, what, what uh, yeah, what, what was the, what ignited the fire for wanting to make that move to, like, uh, you know, just wanting to do movies and then wanting to just up and leave to, to go try to make that happen. Yeah. Uh, always, always. But, but I always, like, um, and I always say this because it's, it's so, it's so bad. It's so invaluable, you know, it's so cool. Like to this day, some people write me through the internet, whatever, online, and they tell me, Jorge, do you remember when you were seven, eight years old and people are like, I want to be a fireman. I tell you this all the time. I want to be a policeman. I want to be a doctor. And I'm like, I, I want to be a Disney animator. That's the, how I built that. <laughs> so for me, the being 70, I don't know how much I'm exaggerating, but I was young when those kind of dynamics you did in school. And mm -hmm. I always wanted to do that. So when I was there, going back to the Florida time, I realized that, um, that uh, uh, if I could do that, like I realized that a lot of people already have Bailed, already have gave up, you know, and I made it. I mean, I made it in the Florida Panthers, and I was drawing. I was getting paid for this, and and I, and um, and I felt like, well, but what about like? But that's this is no movies, you know. Like, I want to see if I want. I can learn more. It, it maybe maybe where I am right now, it's it's the place. But let me see if I can learn more because I feel like I don't even know what how are they doing, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was encouraged, you know. I, I wasn't look. I wasn't. Look, I, I, I was crazy, you know, I was, uh, you know what, you should, you know, I was encouraged. I, I had a good circle of trust in my life, like my friends and my family, you know. Dude, so, you did it. I mean, you, you did it. I mean, the, to, you know, be so cool to see the look on that seven-year-old's face. You made it to Disney, man. You, you, you hit your dream. Uh, I remember, uh, I remember the, um, the moment I met Jorge 
in person because we 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 connected online because I saw that he you know he interned at, at Pixar and which you know yeah. you interned at Pixar and then you uh, also you you were, you were working in game you did you did some stuff at uh, ILM and um, and and then over, uh, going to Disney and then I remember I remember looking you up and reaching out and stuff and and we were we kind of talk about your 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 journey going there and then meeting you in person it was like it was like uh it's like you're you you're you and it's like oh and then like you this your 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 energy was like you know it was uh like someone someone even said in the chat like in, in super infectious and i'm like yeah yeah sam yeah she, <laughs> yeah uh yeah this yeah. this in, infectious energy about you and, and uh um, yeah yeah it was it was really refreshing and uh yeah I mean, I mean, to that point, uh, Frank, like, um, I forgot about that. Like you did the Pixar internship and then you worked, um, a little bit at Blue Sky maybe. And then before coming to uh, Disney for Taldev, but, um, like, what was that experience for you of just kind of like transitioning from college to actual Pixar internship kind of thing? Um, it, it was, um, learning experience because it's everything makes sense you know but it's when you see when you were there that time not everything made sense obviously it's like well, what the hell are you saying but i remember it was like cameo lot it was very came, chameleonological uh skill that gave me to be in these very diverse places you know because as i think for example i was in in school and then i started going and visiting pixar it, on on the side uh, with some friends, uh, some Brazilian friends, you know what I'm saying? The South neighbors, you know what I'm saying? Together, <laughs> stronger, what can I say? It, it, so I was used to meet, actually, Ilhermi Jacinto, which is right now, and he's like a powerful uh, 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 entity in Pigs right now, you know, and uh, I remember he's like, yeah, come here, and I, he started kind of easing me, kind of in and giving me hard notes, because you know how it is, it's, it's navigating, it's having, it's having the technical skills, but... Uh, Wow, that emotional skill of, of oof, it's probably one of the toughest ones. It's, it's hardest to learn, let's put it that way. It's hardest to learn, you know? Mm -hmm. The technicality is it's easier. But uh, that was, uh, uh, yeah, because it was a uh, Pixar. Then, then after I graduated, I went to Pixar, then Electronic EA Games. It's in the game. I was like, FIFA, <laughs> you know? And then I remember I worked there for a bit. And then, uh, um, yeah, Blue Sky, you said. And then uh, Activision with Call of Duty. So, so that I'm just trying to say that I was very diverse cultures and ways to do animation. So that's why I wasn't fixated in how to do one thing. And remember when I got to Disney, Trent and I were like, just force it. But what about the curves and the, the tool? And we're like, yeah, just forcing everything. Like as soon as it looks like a draw, like an image, and it makes sense. Remember, like talking about technicality and deviating a little bit, but uh, it just Party, that's yeah, that's that. That's awesome. I, I just got to jump in here for a sec because please, please. like when I first met you and it's something I learned from you still daily, every day at work that you uh, like that infectious energy, but you, you, you know, you travel the world, you, you are very patriotic. You keep in touch with your family your friends back home. Venezuela is like a big part of your life still, even though you've been away from there for 15 years plus. And what I love about your animation more than anything from a technical standpoint is you have this unique fingerprint, right? Like there's only one yeah. Jorge Ruiz <laughs> and you see it in every one of his shots. And it almost looks like you're doing stop motion because you're like, you're pushing this sculpt together, but it's in every frame there's Jorge. And I just think like, I mean, we, we learn a lot from you just every day. Just uh, you're not afraid to be yourself embrace yeah. that studio is not afraid to embrace that they they let you be yourself and uh and it's it's awesome to see it in your animation because i always tell students at a certain point like everyone's skill level will catch up right we all learn at different speeds but it's going to catch up but then what's that extra thing and your extra thing is that that unique fingerprint uh, that's jorge yeah there, there's this there's this bubbling energy underneath the characters there's i, I still remember I still remember uh, your reel. You know, you have you have the, the, the Rasta man sitting in the in the chair, and you, you have the, uh, the 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 monster pushing through the the, the door, um, the window, and and you know it, it all kind of had this like 
it's like there's this this energy inside of it like trying to get out kind of thing that's a, that's the the easiest way i could put it <laughs> dude and, i uh, <laughs> i don't even know how frank like it's funny you say that because i don't know jorge how you worked on transformers because it's like robots and your animation is so organic and uh -huh. finger pretty and then I, I picture that on a transformer, and it, it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, the, the, the foot skid on the uh, <laughs> on the building. <laughs> True to material. True to material. Research. Research. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I will. Uh, and on on that note, really quickly. Um, uh, so we can we can sort of dive into like you know you can't kind of came from Pixar and you went into the Talbot program at Disney which is where we all met you, Frank met you later, but um, I'll share um, like a few things for everybody. Um, so this, <laughs> is, this is our 2012 um, talent development program, um, uh, like a Disney animation. And so Some represented is art, uh, animation, uh, 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 viz dev, animation, story, <laughs> layout, uh, editorial and everything else. And uh, this is 2012, it's like eight years ago. So here's Jorge, here's Trent. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> he came to work. Hi. Uh, <laughs> you really so this is our like training group. Um, you guys might know Elsa Chang, you guys might know Sun Me, you guys might know Michael Herrera, you guys might know Sabrina. They've done great things. Um, so uh, uh, Frank went through the same thing as well. Uh, maybe like a year or two later yeah you guys were wrapping up um uh, wrapping yeah. up as, and then as you I guys kind of came in so this is where we kind of all met each other um and everyone has gone on to do great things um i i just want to share this because this is when jorge kind of came in in halloween he kind kind of came dressed as john lassiter um <laughs> and john so, lassiter with, with aparegatas though i have my aparegatas on yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's true, that's true, that's true. Uh, and then uh, Jorge, <laughs> I just want to share this too because Jorge was sharing, he was like <laughs> recording. Um, they had an animation uh, assignment to animate Rapunzel and uh, Jorge like shot all this like video reference and I found this and I just wanted to embarrass him at that point. <laughs> You know what, and we, Jorge, we got to tell that quick story that uh, Jorge and I were both doing a Rapunzel animation and we both went off, we did our reference, we did our thumbnails and we think we are being so original. We're, and you know, we both show each other our blocking <laughs> and both of us have her do the same <laughs> hair behind her ear. <laughs> you know, it happens. Yeah, it they're happens. like, I got the perfect specific feminine Rapunzel gesture. And, yeah. like, <laughs> and they do the exact same thing in their shot. Yeah. Exactly hey, Bobby, their shot. I, I love that you showed that Talbot picture. And I saw, I saw just a comment go by from Garnett Garcia um, that said, how old was everybody? And I just got to throw out there, like, that group was so special. And Jorge, you can talk to this, too, because uh, age uh, wasn't a thing. I mean, when we got there, we were all the same level, you know, some of us were 30, some of us were 20, whatever. But when we got there, we're all the same age and we're from all walks of life, all over the country, all over the world. And, uh, but when we got in that room together, we were just the 2012 Tal Taldev group. I mean, there was no, there was no borders, there was no nothing. Right. Yeah, it was very diverse, like uh, personality wise, you know, all shades and of everything, all walks of life. And that was really cool because we, we synced in a great way. Not that we all everyone hold hands, you know, but everyone gravitated to whatever, you know, they feel more comfortable. But we were so close physically, like everyone was sitting so close. That then also, and also we would love so much storytelling that it, could, it was impossible not to, to mix, you know what I'm saying? So that was insane because even in the studios and now that we're departmentalized, in our houses, that thing, it's, it's, it's in the studios, whenever when we were physically too working there, you can see the pockets, you can see a little uh, separation. And that's another conversation, but that was this microclimate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, do you have those shots loaded up? 
have your, I have to look for them because I don't know where I put them actually, but we can keep talking and I, I'll, I'll, I'll bring okay. them for sure. Which that's a good one. Well, it's, it's uh, Flynn Rider. Uh, we don't want to say oh. because it doesn't Oh yeah, uh, uh, I so. Know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Frank knows. <laughs> so, so the thing, the thing, guys, I like about Jorge is just kind of like he's. It, it, it just like if he can squeeze out every sense of entertainment, like in every frame on every shot that he works on, he'll do it. I mean, his his animation uh, 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 sort of hero is Milk Call, and you know he 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 put up Milk Call stuff and crafting every frame. Right, so it's like he would do the same thing in CG animation. Like he would just craft every frame and try to milk all of the entertainment out of like every single frame. Um, Jorge, are well, you still looking at the audience? Up? Yeah, that's for, for everybody that, that, that spends so much time in the graph editor. Like, like yeah, yeah it's, uh, you know, that, that it's, it's, it's important to know that stuff, but like what's on screen is ultimately what's, you know, that's what matters, so it's like, you know, or it, like, yeah, I don't, I don't even like you. You could have something yeah. beautiful on screen, but curves are like all. You know? <laughs> yeah. Jorge, Jorge would just kind of every frame he would, he would, he would lose sleep over it. I think. Yeah, um, and for and for everybody out there that just you know isn't technical or, or gravitates towards that, I I loved it. my first like six months sitting with Jorge during Frozen. We would honestly have somebody from our technical department come into the room, they'd go to Jorge's computer because he called them over, and they would say, like this happened weekly, they would say, oh my God, I've never seen this issue before. I feel like Disney had to hire like a technical team because your computer would crash or your curves would, you couldn't merge layers. And I would hear these people say, this, the, this is a new one, never seen this before. And you would find a way. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. 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 Ultimately, what's in the screen? Again, thank you. Thank you, guys. And, and it all comes. And this is awesome because I, I am aware that I go out of my way to have, uh, um, to have originality, you know, in the shorts, in the shots, you know, because that, that's the key. You know, a lot of people say, well, there's thousands of people that are so good, like you're saying, guys, but everyone levels up at some point. And you have to make originality. That's what's gonna make you stand out, you know. And originality ultimately is is being honest with yourself, right? Kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> to what you really did think. You, did you find the shots, Jorge? Oh yes, yes. yes. Okay, so um, let me preface this a little bit. This <laughs> is we're in talent development program, and the um, the assignment. <laughs> the assignment. I'm gonna mute myself. Sorry. <laughs> the assignment is to. Wait, hold on, Jorge. <laughs> okay. The assignment is to. <laughs> I can't. Uh, the assignment <laughs> is to uh, uh, a pantomime shot of a, a Disney character. Uh, so, um, Jorge chose a uh, Flynn Rider. Um, you know, <laughs> this is not production at all. This is us down in training and pick a character. Um, create a, what, what was it, like four second, five second um, pantomime performance with a Disney character? 150 frames, right? Wow. I mean, I don't know. I think after me not hitting 150 frames with the first three assignments, they enforced it on me. But I think this one I was still, okay. I was still loose. Okay, sorry, sorry. So that's the only preference like, I have to make. So this is Jorge's uh, assignment in Tauco. Yeah, and, and I'll play it really fast because we, we are overbuilding it, but the point is that follow your heart. No, no. The point <laughs> is that there's, there's progress. There is artistic growth and there's hope, you know? <laughs> so this is what I thought it was, was going to be. Like, this was my idea. It's just a clip, right? But this was just, it's just an image. And I presented it to Eric Goldberg, which me growing up, maybe some of you guys, millennials, even though I am millennials, well, I got to say, on the edge, but I am. It, a lot of people don't know your, your history of storytelling and animation. They say, your Eric Goldberg was one of the supervisors, you know, in all the things of a lot of in our childhoods, you know, adults, young kids, or whatever. 
But I went over there and I looked for some research to see what he thought. And he gave me some drawings. He loved it. And just uh, let me show you. This was the idea. And this is uh, me blocking uh, the idea. Can you see that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it's blocking. So blocking, it's just the rough poses. It's just the main storytelling poses. Just enough to convey your idea. So. Okay. And, and that person that did that animation right there works still at a studio. <laughs> okay. My point is that you, because you, you couldn't, I didn't know how to present it, talking about presentation. Let's see it again, you know. See, if, and I want to explain it now. For me, you, you know, like I show I remember showing it to Trent and Paul. Well, <laughs> you, you know, there's a, let me show you. There's a tower. He pops up. He sees, oh, there's another way. And he's going to escape. Oh, it pops out. No way. Oh, that extra <laughs> way. Lynn, that extra way was enough to sink it down. And I show it to all everyone, and they told me that I'm, <laughs> that it made no sense. And I'm like, well, it, it, because it's a flood. People couldn't tell it was a flood. And, before, and, and I remember Trent and Bowie and everyone just trying to explain me that it wasn't about the flood. It, it just didn't make no sense. And again, it's about presentation. Every show, every, every show and every studio has a way to present your ideas, right? And then Pixar, for example, I came a little bit of Pixar. Pixar has to be more stepped, right? You don't have to have much pose at the beginning. Again, the culture goes from, from movie to movie. But anyway, Jorge, Jorge when, you, when you came to my desk to show me this, the first thing you brought up was you asked me to pull it up. I pull it up on my screen, and you say, "Dude, what do you think? I'm gonna animate the water. I'm gonna do ripples in the water." And I was like, "Jorge, I don't know, like, if that's a good idea. Maybe we should work on the, the like the, the idea, water. dude." But <laughs> what do you think I'm gonna animate the ripples in the water and I was like yeah do it man wow <laughs> but anyways I put some love on it you know and I'm actually I was actually checking it out oh, this is great this is great and it holds up you know at the end talking about feedback and collaboration <clears throat> and ignorance and education you know this is what ended up that I'm actually proud of it, it looks yeah good. this is great this is great it's really good oh yeah. <laughs> or hey, I mean, this is so good, and it's a it's a real testament to you and your like your persistence and your ability to like take right. notes and pivot. Because I, in my mind, this this was the best assignment in our group, no, and you did it. You did it in 150 frames, just like Bobby said. You squeezed entertainment out of every single frame, and <laughs> like you weren't your blocking to your final is so different. And I think for students to see that, like. Yeah, things change a lot, man. We get notes, and you change it, and you yeah. fought through it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, I mean, and it's, I mean, sorry. Go ahead. Frank. No, no, no. Go. Um, I, I, I was just gonna say, um, like uh, with Jorge, in every assignment that he had in Talga, he would always be like, it, whether it was like a Ralph monologue or whether it was like, you know, Flynn, you know, kind of like, he would. I mean, you guys were there until like three o'clock in the morning sometimes. <laughs> and um, Jorge would be like, should I animate the tears on Ralph's eyes? Like, <laughs> do you think that'll make a difference? Yeah, yeah, every time, every time. Remember like that Ralph shot you did with the exploding cake? You'd be like, like whatever I can do to be this you know, 2012 milk call. Do you think I should do that? Do you think it'll make a difference? <laughs> and uh, I specifically, I, I have to make fun of you, uh, Jorge, I, I, at this point too, even though the story is kind of funny, but like, you know, at some point the directors, <laughs> the directors of Tangled kind of came down <laughs> to give all the trainees feedback on their Flynn Rider or Rapunzel shots. And uh, Nathan Grano, and Byron Howard, who directed Tangle, kind of came down to us, us sort of like peons, uh, just kind of like training <laughs> program. They watched Jorge's shot. They gave notes on Jorge's shot with the, you know, kind of like a uh, Flynn Rider thing. 
And um, we were all sort of starstruck. And then when they left, Jorge, Jorge was like, I don't know about those notes. I, I don't think they're right. Jorge, like, these are the fucking directors of the fucking movie. Like, why? Like, why? Why wouldn't you take your notes? She's like, I don't think they're right. I'm trying to develop the character. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I, 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 Frank just couldn't handle that. He turned his camera off. He's like, no, nope, I can't. Oh, my son, dude. <laughs> no, 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 no. It, it, it was not quite like that. I was just questioning. And you go to a testament that you need to, you need to think the notes and maybe think what's the note behind the note because, yeah. again, we're so close. When it comes with experience, we're so close to it that, and we work so much, so hard on these pieces that a lot of the times give you, people give you feedback. Yeah. And sometimes when they're right, it hurts even more. Hurts, you know, I mean, I mean what is it? The truth hurts first and then makes you grow. <laughs> that's, right. that's the way. And like a lot of the times, some notes, you know, it depends. But the director should have a, a little heavy opinion. Yeah. yeah. I mean, okay, that's, that's kind of a good point in general because, I mean, all of us have been working for over a decade and we still get notes all the time in dailies where when you first get them you're like oh really like and you're so close to the shot but you realize you know the director is looking at it from uh you know a bigger standpoint overall flow uh, everything and you have to be able to like as an animator even if you love your ideas and your shot you got to be able to start from scratch if you need to mm, and, and quick. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and quick yeah, <laughs> yeah. you gotta recognize but that's, that's what I'm saying, like, in, in tiny little to, to originality, sorry, uh, being original, bringing your, your experiences, is being original, but uh, sometimes you, you got to cater it to, to certain audience, you know, right. and, and, and originality is being specific, but the more specific you are, sometimes it's hard to get to a certain object, uh, um, audience, and, and, and supervisors or leadership, but, and you have to pick and choose sometimes when you want to be, when you want to spend that much time to, you know, you got to, you gotta choose your battles, but it's hard. It's with experience, you yeah. recognize yeah. when is what shots require what, how long time and energy. Yeah, it, it seems like you put, you put you put you put uh, energy. You know, whatever whatever kind of shot it is. You know, whatever you know, however long it is, whatever character. Even if it's just a quick like, I I, I remember, you know, I would I would come in early at, at Disney just to like squeeze in some some time on like a personal test before getting and and i would think it was empty and i would you know i i could i could get get some secret uh work in and then and hori's rolling in already because we, we <laughs> shared an office and, and trent was there too for a bit too and uh Amen. you know it'd be like yeah. seven in the morning have yeah. my breakfast burrito and he'd come in <laughs> you know like <laughs> and 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 it, it was cool we we would just we would just work and and i remember this one shot i remember on big girl six it was the gummy bears shot and you <laughs> like it was you know just a quick gummy bears like it was just that 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 quick shot but you were like you know it was it was you know you were hammering on it um and i think it was something you inherited too uh um from someone else but it was like you know Regardless of the, the the big the big shots, you know, with uh, you know, wasabi cutting through the, you know, just uh, was it, he was stuck in the thing and you had to burrow through the bottom of it, like you know, <laughs> regardless if it was like a bigger shot like that or just like you know, a one line kind of thing, like you still put that same energy and same importance on it, you know. Whereas you know, sometimes you can uh, you know get something that's like uh you know you may not feel like it's as important so you don't put as much energy into it or you don't put as much effort into it but you know it was, it was like you know same yeah. level and same you know because your 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 name's attached to it so yeah mm -hmm. I, I think every shot that you did jorge like you tried to um just sort of like squeeze every bit of um entertainment and quality out of it um you know as you could every single shot and you would obsess yeah. about it. Like we would get coffee in the morning and you know, you run into Jorge with the coffee and you'd be like, I don't know, man. I, I just kind of like, yeah, I just kind of did this whole thing. The director didn't like this and the, you know, but I had this whole idea, but it, you can tell that it, you know, and it consumed him, you know, um, <laughs> which is kind of like that passion that I admire about Jorge too, of just kind of like every shot that he's on, 
that I talked to him about would be just kind of like, um, how could it be the most iconic Disney shot that's ever existed, you know? Um, mm. So that's just kind of like how he comes out swinging like every time. Hey, or hey. I got to just jump in here for a sec too, because I mean, that passion you have is so strong. And I, I just want to rewind for a second because we, we kind of glossed over it, but I think, you know, there's a lot of people with Rise Up that are in a similar boat where they've graduated school and they're trying to get their foot in the door. And like, you're a guy who spent, you know, I think the, the misconception out there is that you graduate Cal Arts or Arts Center, wherever you go to school, uh, online schools, whatever it is, and then you get a job at Disney and it's easy. But I mean, you you worked for years. You worked for, for years and you were in games and commercials and, and doing everything, but you were also doing demo reel personal animations on the side. And I think that's what got you into Disney. And I kind of want to know about that time, like how did you keep that passion that we're talking about right now alive during that, that like, I mean, that's a long stretch to, to keep motivated and, uh, and keep pushing yeah yeah it's it's a lot of a lo in, in to connect all those thoughts guys it's a lot of it's discipline and how did i discipline it's the key even, even if it, you may it may seem that uh that you might not have the skills and you compare yourself with different timelines of a different artist that they have different timelines and uh, it's discipline for the lack of talent discipline uh, you know and um and I believe, you know, like I said, uh, going back to the time from Venezuela to here, it all happened one after another. And for me, I do this, uh, this uh, thing, this method in my life too. Like, I don't expect things will happen, you know? So I wasn't desperate. It's not that I, were, it, it's, I, I didn't envision me being at Disney right after school, you know? Was it the world telling me maybe because I'm from Venezuela? Who the heck? Maybe. But uh uh, I really realized that I knew that I had to work harder. I knew, I knew right from the, from the get-go, you know? And uh, I believe that I, when I started getting my opportunities granted, I started becoming almost addictive to, to, to feeling this, you know, to, to, to not disappoint anyone, to not disappoint myself, you know? To not disappoint the people that come after me, you know? And maybe I'm giving too much responsibility, but that's the way I am. I couldn't miss this opportunity, you know, that life had given, because I realized that I wasn't the norm. I was not the norm as in like, it wasn't that I was more, it was just like my opportunity, my journey wasn't the norm. And if it was gonna, I wasn't gonna get to where I wanted to be, it certainly wasn't gonna be because of me, because I was gonna do all the work that it could have been done, you know, to get there. So wherever I am and wherever I got was going to be all right because I did all that I could. And don't misunderstand me with the complacency. You know what I'm saying? It's not, you know, it, it, it was just that uh, I did all of it and more, you know. I just felt that there's no, there's no way that I'm going to miss this opportunity. I felt, you know. And, and uh, the more that I, ch I achieve, the more I realize that, if you're disciplined, you can get it. It's crazy, you know? Like, the more, the more I did, the more I realized that I could, you can do it. You can definitely make it happen, you know? But it's hard because you don't, it, until you live it, you don't really see that if you work hard enough, it's, it, it's, they tell you that so much that it becomes bullshit words. You, if you work really, no, no, it's just, it's just discipline, man. And it's just really freaking hard. And it's really, really hard. That's the thing. It's just like, well, I'm not intelligent enough or I'm not bright enough, you know? But it's not that. It, I, like, you know, like, what is, I was looking at an interview. Um, it's, it's, it's just separates from people I talk, that there or not to there, you know, to keep uh, um, facing life and, and, br and grow brighter. You know what I'm saying? So how did I, it, it was just that. It was just like a responsibility. And I don't want to get into like a too dramatic survival guilt but I felt some, some and, and talking kind of real sometimes here and there, I felt like I needed, I, I couldn't miss this. You know what I'm saying? That's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. And that was the drive for me, you know? And it all comes down that you, it, that's, that's a, a little, that's the tough part from a lot of people that are watching this right now, is that if something doesn't feel right, but I don't have all the discipline, I don't have, well, it's habits, yes, but it's also maybe you're not, 
channelizing it in, in the right way. So that's why I always encourage people to be educated about all the, the things in the pipeline to see where is your place in the pipeline. Because, you, you know, time is really short. And dude, even if you realize what's your place in the time pipeline at 60, go for it. I'm not saying, you know, there's, it's too late. No, it doesn't freaking matter. But try to be clever with your time, you know, and don't look back. But uh, you got to make an edu educated decision. And I answered like three, time, three answers in one, right? But it makes sense. All right. That's, that's uh, so awesome. Well <laughs> that, that's so cool, dude. And, it, you know, it, you said something to me in talent development. I, I remember so clearly the word stuck with me because you said exactly that. You said at the end of the six months, it's okay if I get let go, but I got to be able to tell myself that I gave it my all because if there's any regrets after the six months, you just want to be able to say like, I, I gave, I gave it everything. There's nothing else I could do. And that stuck with me. And, uh, and that's something that I, I still see you doing uh, all the time. Uh, really quick, uh, Jorge, um, Yusra uh, in the chat panel um, asks, um, Yusra, Yusra uh, he's really inspired me at the same time, feels really difficult to get into the place of your dreams. Um, and she wonders who is your inspiration? It, it's a, it, it, um, are we talking about a person? Or is yeah, person, like a person. It, it's hard because... Uh, it's it's many persons you know it's many it's many persons you know like i i have artists i have uh poets uh, i have father my, my my dad and my mom are, are inspirations are it's crazy because the more i you know it is the more you grow the more you realize that other things are we're, we're very santa claus you know we're very fabulated you know but uh, wow you know like yeah my, my family and that kind of respect and awareness you know i guess i would say yeah my, my my family introduced me to more of my heroes you know and uh yeah i, I can't uh, yeah i can't pinpoint it you know mm -hmm. music inspires me there's no really it's many journeys in one you know mm -hmm. it's big but uh but yes is that no no we didn't answer <laughs> Um, I, I wanted to uh, touch on Jorge too of like how you, uh, what I think is interesting of like, um, you were at Tal Dev at Disney, um, you were animating on a few of the films and then you kind of like went into uh, VR. And so you've been an animation supervisor on um, Cycles, uh, Disney's first VR thing and then Myth um so what was that uh, experience like for you it was awesome it was yeah it was it was amazing it was it was a challenge it was a, again another opportunity that yeah. uh it was me <clears throat> you know what i'm saying <laughs> and looking and be proactive about it you know because i mean you, you guys know and again i'm not being too specific about it because you know it doesn't come to the conversation but uh Usually you have a route, you know, you usually have to do this and this and that. And, and, and if it's not in that order, you know, and I kind of, it, it was really cool to see, to have that big responsibility because uh, I took it as a big responsibility because like it was like the first PR, you know, the first film released by, by Walt Disney Animation Studio, which uh, if you go to the studio, you see like, uh, uh, what is it? Dance of the Trees. What is the first uh, uh, symphony? Uh, trees. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Whatever also, that. if you haven't if you haven't thought about it, how many how many times has Disney had a Venezuelan animation supervisor? Zero times. Well, th <laughs> there's a first time, but but uh, history will be, be many times. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, you know, there, 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 there is presence, you know, because it's different, right, Frank? Like you know what I'm talking about. Like the the, the discussion is different from today, from a year, from five years, from ten years. It's a different conversation that I would always have to keep having, you know. But uh, boy, you, you, were, what do you, what's the question you asked? Um, what was the question I asked? Um, I think I think he asked you to do that tree dance again. <laughs> Remember, it was like it was like two trees, and they're like. <laughs> so, well, the, oh yeah, that transition it's, it's, from like regular animating to yeah, no, no, to, to to have that again to have. That was really. You guys want to do it together? The tree dance? 
<laughs> I mean, they sang. Okay. It, okay, let me let me make uh, clear. We we brought up that shortest because it was the first in color, and I I saw cycles like next mentioned in the same kind of. Please allow my my insanity in the same dimension of that short, you know. So I was like, wow, mm -hmm. and it was crazy because it was very interesting, and it was really worth talking about it because it, it was really interesting to to, to lead, you know. And to me, it was a taboo to lead. Like me, I felt and, and that I was not embarrassed, but I feel like I didn't want my peers to hear me saying that because I felt like mm -hmm. since I got to the United States, it, I felt like I had to lay low, man. And my energy is very high, so don't misunderstand me. So I had to, and one of the, 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 the studios, and I'm going to mention this really fast. I remember one of the studios telling me that I had to, I had to, mellow down and one of the big students that i was before and i remember i was like man i'm like seven five percent mellow down like i don't know like am i in the <laughs> right place but that's the thing you know like was it was it, was it pixar and, i mean it could be one of them but anyways if they if they but but uh but but that's the thing it doesn't like <laughs> one person one comment doesn't represent the studio we know that right there's all kinds of people yeah so true. Not all. I, I know that, you know, and because, you know, everyone was super dope in their own ways, you know, but uh, uh, to, to, to be able to supervise people and to be able to still be, I, I didn't know how to lead in a humble way or, or with um, maybe, but the experience gave me a little bit of a confidence, you know what I'm saying? To, to know what I was talking about because I felt like everyone's like, wow, this work, this work, but I really always, and that's why I work really disciplined. It's like, I always want my bike to be harder than my, 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 uh, what is it? Bark. Yeah, bark. Because I see all these people do all this shit and stuff like that, and I'm like, no, I have to be super substantial, you know? So to, throughout, the, throughout the years, it gave me the, the, the confidence to be able to kind of talk with property and, and lead other animators and feel yeah. that I somehow know what I was talking about, even though it... The ignorance is a blessing. and we didn't know what the hell we we're doing, you know, but, um, Jorge, that's, that's awesome. And what just from my observation, watching from the sidelines, like I got to watch you and Jeff Gibson and Jose and Ed kind of like this scrappy group of excited people create these VR, just amazing VR short films. And, um, if you haven't seen both of them, they're, they're amazing. Uh, Jorge can tell you how to find them, but I just love like, that you you all jump in the deep end and you surround yourself with people that you trust and are like-minded i mean talk about that because i mean you're all just you're like seeing you guys in the halls was infectious because you four would always be together and i know there's more people involved too but you're just feeding off each other yeah and it's really cool to talk about it and and again i'm imagining four of us talking with all of the other hundred and something people and, and, you know, I'm excited to, to just to tell you our stories, guys. And, and I'm glad that you are listening because that's the thing, you know, like it, these conversations will make more sense to the situations you're going. Anyway, it, for me, it, yeah, for me was um, just excitement or, or, or being validated, you know, by, by people that you respected, you know, like your peers. You know, like, for example, like you, one big, big message is that you got to surround yourself with people smarter than you. You have to do it. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and smart means it's not IQ. Smart is many things. That's another conversation. But you got to pretty much sums up to people that you really respect because you are the average of those 10 people that you hang out with, whether you like it or not, you know? And, um... And that's kind of what it felt like. It felt like a, because it then comes out to collaboration. Then collaboration is something that I really talk really exciting about because I realized working with people more talented than I was and respect them so much and being able to collaborate, which is delegate with, with blindness almost. I mean, after conversations, your micro duties with this, this big thing that we're doing. And for me, it was amazing to really see people that you respect. Also, people that I like them in a personal level. But it doesn't happen all the time. Sometimes when you like in a personal level, or let's, let's reward it. When you have an affinity in a personal level, sometimes you can talk 10 or 15 emails over a cup of tea, over a cup of beer, or, or, or whatever, glass of beer, whatever, you know. 
So it, it all comes to honest, you know, but that's the thing. It's a balance. It was cool. It was, it was cool to do new things, you know, to rethink pipeline. It was awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's so cool. And, and, you know, for our rise up community, like they're all, there's a discord for rise up and like, I encourage you to like what you can take from Jorge here is find your people there. I mean, find your group, surround yourself with talent. You know, maybe you're an animator and you find a rigger and a modeler and you guys do something together. Mm -hmm. uh, but I love the like the young, scrappy and hungry nature of uh, of Jorge and the VR team. And I mean, you can all do the same thing right here, too. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I, I remember at Cadmo. Remember, like that was some validation at Cadmo saw saw the product, you know, because the product spoke for itself. The, the, the film, you know, the product of the of or the encounters, or whatever you want to call it. And uh, that was amazing, you know, that's to, to really see when ignorance is a blessing, sometimes to ask for forgiveness, that permission, like collaboration. That's how you find what you really like in the pipeline. So, right. Jorge, I have to just tell one Ed Catmull story uh, and embarrass us a little bit. So if you don't know who Ed Catmull is, he invented CG animation as we know it. He invented polygons, he did that hand, he, he's he's the he's the pioneer of computer animation, and Jorge and I were in our first couple months at Disney. We're in the office. It's like seven a.m., eight a.m. No one's there except Jorge and I. And Ed Catmull just wanders by our office and he he lounges on our couch. Right? We, I mean, we're nobody. And the the pioneer, the creator of life as we know it in CG animation, is just chilling on our couch. And what Ed Camel doesn't know yet is that Jorge has a picture at his desk on the wall of 20 year old Ed Camel, right? 20, 22 year old Ed Camel. And it's just, it's weird to have a picture of a young Ed Camel on your desk, but it's there. And Ed Camel walks over to the picture. And we don't even know Ed at this point, right? He walks over to the picture and he just stares at it for like, what felt like the longest, <laughs> he's just doesn't long. say anything. Long, and, long. Jorge, I remember we exchanged a look and the look yeah. was like, does he recognize himself? <laughs> like, does he know, does he even know who that is? And we didn't want to disturb <laughs> it either. We didn't want to break whatever, like, we didn't want to like, if we saw like a rare, rare, like launch, launch Nessie in, in the lake and you want to, you want to move, Back like, up. Let's, let's just see it. Let's yeah. Go, wow. You know? <laughs> So we're just, we're just, we're just observing. He's staring at this picture for what feels like forever. And then he looks up and he says very like calmly and quietly, he says, I wonder where I put that blazer. And <laughs> that might be the smartest thing I've ever heard. Like, I think he was, I think he had that blazer in the picture. He had the blazer on and he probably went through like 50 years oh, of time shit. trying to figure out where that blazer was. Mind. Mind. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I, I, uh, uh, really, uh, that was awesome. I remember when you guys told me about that and that was amazing. Um, well, now Jorge well, he's and an inspiration. He, he's an inspiration. No, seriously, he's an inspiration. You know what I'm saying? Again, yeah. he's flawed because people got, yeah. everyone is flawed, but you know, you got to see the intentions, you know, and it all comes from intentions, I believe, you know? I mean, you've, you've, you've had kind of a relationship blossom with Ed since then and it's yeah. pretty cool. Meet, yeah, your, that's awesome, meet your hero and and um and and get to know him personally can i uh be uh before we get to this q a really quickly i just really wanted to um because we're friends and i can embarrass you in this way uh but uh i i tried to, i i compiled like my favorite moments of jorge in animation uh like <laughs> over the years and uh <laughs> If I could, and I know you won't take offense, Jorge, I'll preface this, is an amazing fucking animator. Um, he's great, um, he's an intelligent animator, um, uh, just so, sort of graphically designed, um, uh, just sort of great shots. But I wanted to share with, uh, if that's okay, Jorge, because we're friends, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, just kind of like oh, shots yeah. that made me crack up of uh, Jorge over the years. Um, I'll start out with, I'll start out with this one. <laughs> I'm already laughing. Okay, 
So uh, no. if you guys, if you guys can see this shot, um, which by the way was animated by Trent Corey, this first shot that we're seeing yeah. right now. Um, this is Trent Corey. Th this is Trent Corey and Frank and Jorge's first movie at Disney. Uh, and actually, Frank, I think Frank did a lot of the. You did a lot of the troll cycles back there too, right, Frank? Yeah. Uh, right. I don't know what shot this one is. This is. I think uh, this, is this the. Uh, the, the uh, when the, push the, comes to shove, blah 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 blah. blah okay. okay. I think I animated blah, around blah, blah. it, but this one may be Justin. Uh, okay. Whatever. Yeah. So I'm gonna play it through. <laughs> I'm gonna play it through. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get through. Okay, so you guys ready? Okay, so this, this first shot is great. This is Trent, Corey, um, like with that whole like Olaf bit. It's all Trent, um, and then. <laughs> <laughs> and then we go into Jorge's shot, and if you look at the the troll on the top right, there's like <laughs> Jorge is like, should I make him like bug eyed? And should I, <laughs> I, 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 should I make him sort of like like wall eyed kind of thing? And so he eats, <laughs> and uh, and then there's kind of like this tongue lick. <laughs> he kind of does, but there's no reason. There's no reason for this troll to be like as bug-eyed as he is, except for Jorge going. I want to bring something special to this shot, right? Um, well, and to to Frank's point earlier, like <laughs> it kind of it kind of doesn't matter how small the shot is, right? You just right like he finds a way to get this <laughs> guy. Charm and energy in there. He's bug eyed and he does a lip lick. <laughs> and there's no reason for it except to to make his hallmark on Disney animation and make Glenn King proud. Um, yes. <laughs> guys. No, I mean. My face is so stupid. Like. I mean, I always look for something in any shot to, to make me to make me excited about, you know? Right, right, mm -hmm. right. right. I, I, I always do. I, I always try to look for something, you know? Got it. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? Like, at that point, when we're... So at that point, we're all in the office together. It's Jorge. It's Frank and I. We're all in there. And... Oh, yeah. Frank animation is there, too. Sorry, yeah. In my yeah. shot. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We all don't know. <laughs> yeah. um, and then this, this is the um, this is kind of sorry. This is the kind of second Jorge shot I want to bring <laughs> bring up. Everyone knows what's happening. So, like uh, yeah. for a little bit of context, um, o o Olaf's uh, a frozen adventure that came up before uh, like Coco, um, but uh, <laughs> this is a musical shot. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to point out, like, <laughs> look how intense this is, like, only from Jorge's brain. Like, this, this kid, <laughs> it's the last day of his life, and he's dancing for his life. Uh, this guy... Oh, shoot. <laughs> I, I have to, Bobby, let me tell a quick story about this shot because Jorge sent me this in blocking, right? You sent it to my G chat and you said, Jorge and I do this sometimes. We send each other a first look and we say, hey, can I get an extra pair of eyes on it? And he sent me these carolers. And my response was, have you, are there carolers in Venezuela? Like, have you ever seen? <laughs> <laughs> and then my second response was like, you're either going to get promoted or fired. I don't know which one. There's no middle <laughs> one. And you, you eventually got promoted to supervisor. <laughs> look how excited everybody is. Holy yeah. shit. And then the look at the guy in the back. He's doing a thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind but, of unnecessary. So, <laughs> <thing>. <laughs> 
to further to further embarrass Jorge even more, when he when he showed this in dailies, this got the best reaction. Oh of, my god! Of any dailies room I have ever seen in my career, <laughs> people laughed so hard for like for like twenty minutes. Did you do this uh, uh, shot too, Jorge? Yeah. <laughs> like, look at everybody's reaction. Look at everyone's expression on this scared ass couple. Dude, you could, you could, you could, like, you could uh, desaturate it and put some <laughs> horror music over it. <laughs> like, look at everybody! <laughs> ridiculously happy back then. Oh, you, know, you could, you could definitely do that. Look at yeah. everybody. They all look like crazy motherfucking people. Oh. <laughs> God. Yeah, it was very different from the story wars, man. And and I gotta say, um, I, I did it very different from the story <laughs> wars. And, and there's a danger to it, but I gotta say, Trent, and, and I'm not like oh celebrating my own thing, but dude, I never seen a reaction in the in whatever years I've been there, man. For that short that it's like three seconds, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy, dude. Imagine yeah. imagine if this was like the poster. For like Frozen Three, <laughs> you know, it's just kind of like a bunch of freaks. Well, yeah. well, and I just for for a second, I just want to say too that that reaction <laughs> that Jorge got, the reaction he got was because it's a three second shot, it's not long, but he gave them the unexpected, and that's Jorge in a nutshell. He yeah. always yeah. gives you the unexpected, like whether it's in the storyboards or layout, he will give you something you don't expect, and that's that's the power of Jorge. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. I love I, you guys. I, I, I mean, I love those shots, awesome. man. I love those shots. I mean, they're <laughs> so, they're so him. And uh, every, I, I like how everyone is cranked up to 11 or 12. There's no one subtle. Um, and then <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to share, like, my best of Jorge uh, 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 <laughs> thing. I want to know what would have happened if that door was open. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this yeah. is actually this is, uh, uh, yeah this is this is a uh, trench shot. Um, that thing was so you're not oh, you're not sharing anymore. Yeah. yeah. Hey Bobby, you're, you're, you're sharing, right? Yeah. Are you sharing? Bobby, share your screen. Your screen's, your screen's not sharing. <laughs> Bobby's like having a great time. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm oh. Not oh. That thing was galaxy. Carbon fiber. Right. Even lighter. Killer actuators. Oh, <laughs> 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 okay, so while while we're watching this, <laughs> let me let me walk you through how this all happened. Uh, I needed reference to see what Hero's face would look like against Baymax's belly. So well, I was trying to find material. Jorge and I were we tried to saran wrap a few other things. And finally, I thought pantyhose. Pantyhose would be perfect. And I drove to CVS at like <laughs> three in the morning. And I, I said, give me your best pantyhose. Like, I don't want pantyhose that rip. I want the best quality, best quality. And uh, so I got the top, the best. And Jorge, for an hour, pushed his face in these <laughs> high quality pantyhose. Uh, <laughs> Dude, I was surprised that didn't rip with that little hole there. I didn't know Frank in later cuts it did it did rip. <laughs> <laughs> I love wow. it. Wow, look at that. <laughs> that's not even the line at all. That's what not that the line at all. It's not even close to the line. Uh, <laughs> reference. Says. Reference. Yeah. yeah it's a big oh, no, oh, yeah, and, then, yeah. and then Tori's like, whoa man, that's cool. Whoa. But whoa. <laughs> Subtext. That was a subtext. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's cool. That's Bobby, awesome. I don't know how you found that, but you did. Oh my god. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. That's what we kind of go through of uh, uh, just kind of as animators for everybody. Um, <laughs> so I will. Uh, I can kick it over to Q and A. Uh, like Jorge, if you're if you're still avails. Um, Anytime. Like seriously, I'm. Like I'm, I'm, I'm super excited, you know, to to do this, you know, because you do can make an an impact. I hope we can make a, an impact because, you know, like as just a couple of years that we have ahead, of of maybe, you know, and and professionally maybe 
of, of some people here or, or not. Maybe you're ahead of us. It's just cool uh, to facilitate, you know, right? Yeah. Let's say the yeah. tape, facilitate. So, yes. No. Uh, so what hey, do you Mark, as we as we go into the q and I just I just want to throw out there too. like, do you have any kind of last words uh, before we start answering questions on like, what would you tell? What would you tell 21 year old Jorge working with the Florida Panthers trying to, you know, you're zigzagging through the industry trying to find your way to Disney? Like, what would you go tell yourself? It's uh, OK, let me think about it so I don't get into a, a tangent like I usually get. You can get into a tangent. That's no, to be short. I would um, I would tell that discipline pays off, you know. Yeah. Discipline pays off. Originality pays off. Yeah. Originality, not for the sake of showing what you think is original for some other people. It's what, what you think. Because then when you're trying to show something that you think is original for other people, it, it, it's, it's not honest, you know? And then it's not original anymore. Again, you got to know and recognize which shots and what situations are better for you to address them, you know? But uh, see, if I tell that to my twin something, he'll be like, what the hell's wrong with you, man? What are you saying? Who are you? <laughs> you look old, bro. No, no, no. If they, no, no, I would say that discipline, you know, originality, humility, 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 and being pathetic and, and compassionate, you know? Zero pity, compassionate, you know? And humility, it's, it's crazy, you know? Like, humility, how long it goes. And again, you got to be cool. Let me say what else I would say. Be cool. What is it like? Be cool is not being complacent. It's not being um, uh, just tranquilized or something like that. Just to, you know, just, just recognize and, and show with your work. You know what I'm saying? With the discipline. Be cool, you know? You got to, you, you can't let anyone, you know, this, you have to, you, it's okay to challenge this to a, the status quo. You know what I'm saying? And it's going to be okay, you know? And, uh, for me, as in you have to let it go. As like for me, like knowing something that to know, and this is more for, sorry, like this is more for, for, for everyone today because 10 years ago was different. But right now, like it's more like you got to let it go. We're not victims anymore. Again, I know, and because we're talking about rise up and maybe my, uh, people that are like not from here or people that are not having the same opportunities or something like that. It, it, to be a little more specific on that end, it, I would say that we're not victims anymore, okay? We have to be cool, it doesn't mean be tranquilized, you know? But we're not victims anymore because then we, we fall into what they believe, you know? So we, we can't believe whatever they believe, you know, whatever they, you know, we know, you know? The bad ones, because it has no color or that, you know, the bad ones, whatever, you know? In, in culture, you know, but uh, we got to be cool and humble, facilitate, and we got to respect the, like, the generations that came before us. So we got to know what happened in, in the generation we come before and be, be free by it. You know what I'm saying? As a not be victim, you know? Yes, recognize and respect it, but, but moving forward, you know, and don't get sidetracked and, and really go focus on what's, what's essential, which is like what makes you happy and make everyone around you be happy, you know? I think that's cool. And it's a lot to say, but that's a kind of like the philosophy. Maybe I, I would sit down and chill with my something year old self and talk about it, you know? And, um, and yeah, and, and be kind, man. Just be kind, be curious, be curious, you know? And yeah, and, and that, that's kind of what we did. You, know, uh, you gotta be yeah, kind. That's man. awesome, man. <laughs> that's awesome. Jorge, amazing, dude. Um, that's right in line yeah. with how we know you like day to day and uh, uh, the optics of like how you present yourself in the industry. But um, um, so um, if you don't mind, Jorge, uh, a little bit of Q&A. Um, so Samantha Tavares, my friend, uh, she says that uh, I can see that you really care about people and their journeys. Um, what is your favorite thing to learn about others? <clears throat> There's no specific things, but it's, it's uh, it, 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 all, the, my, all my blind spots. You know what I'm saying? Like the more you know, you kind of think you know, and the more kind of like confidence you have, you have to make sure that 
that home humility gives me humility because uh, when I um, when I share journeys, you know, and I and because I always I talk a lot, as you can see, and I have to tell myself that if you speak, if you speak, if you speak, the only thing that you hear is the things that you know already. So you gotta you gotta listen. And when you're teaching, if you are a good teacher, you you have to listen, you know. And that humble it humbles me down, you know what I'm saying? It makes me appreciate. It makes me learn. You know, it just makes me see the blind spots that, that I that I don't see. You know, that's mm-hmm. what I that's what I like it. The, the different journeys. It, it makes you grow. It, it's just education. So the different journeys of everyone's path is your <clears throat> kind of like it just enrich enriches me. It's just experiences that I hear. You know, different characters. You know, different ways of thinking. You know, different ways to do because I'm talking professionally, but you kind of. You kind of dabble on the professional and the characters of people, you know, because you have to care. It's not like it can't be uh, student one, student two. So you know, I that that exchange it, it's fresh, and and we come, we become stale really easy. That's why I'm really urging people to 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 listen to us because we're passing. It's for you guys, you know. It's for everyone. And every time I hear the the the, the, the student is that that it's their time. They're gonna be long gone after us. And that's the, you know, that's the reality that's going to be, it's going to be awesome. You know, it's going to be good. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. That's that's awesome. That makes sense, man. Um, I, I have a question here um, from Camilla and it's kind of a two part question. Um, they say, do you have any tips on applying to internships? And Jorge, you've, you've done a bunch of kind of internships or training programs. And especially when you're not coming from the USA. And the follow up question on that is, uh, do you think it's okay to reach out to companies and show your portfolio instead of just waiting for the internship to pop up? And I know, Jorge, from chatting with you, that you you applied to Disney multiple times for the training program, and and it wasn't right timing uh, all the time. So can you talk about that a little bit? <clears throat> Don't wait. Nothing's going to happen to you. You know, you have to make things happen. You can't be intense, annoying as you as you maybe like your protocol is wrong. You can't be just skipping crap and misspeaking to people you know so but you need to reach out you need to be seen you know it's not the mentality that you're showing well my work is not just just yet it will be we all know grow you know what i'm saying but you gotta start reaching out reaching out you can't wait you can't there's no way of, of waiting it's an active thing you know you need to reach out yesterday to all the people like go and do a list what are you going to wait till you graduate? That's just a, um, a stepping stone thing for you, validation, cool, this academic education. But you, you can't wait, you know? And if you get the rejection, you start getting rejection stuff out of the way, it will come a lot, you know? And, uh, but you got you to gotta reach out. You got to be active about it. And that was one part. And what was the other part? I, I mean, I, th- oh, I think... What you recommend, right? Yeah, I, I think that covers it. And, and I'll yeah. just add that too, because, you know, with Frank, Bobby, and you... Uh, we all went into training programs later in our career. Like we had all been working for five or six years and all of us had to take a pay cut. It almost feels like a step backwards, even though it's not. I mean, you're, you're back in the deep end, you're learning. I mean, what was that choice like for you? Because I think we have a lot of people that are either switching careers or they're in a job that's comfortable, but then all of us took that step to just go into the, uh, the uncomfortable. If you want to be creative, you got to be all about change. That's what it is. So don't be afraid of change. I kind of, yeah, I kind I of see it as a uh, kind of like a slingshot. You know, you, you sometimes you have to you have to take that 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 wind up for you, you know, propel forward, you know, especially if you're, if you're going in, going into uh, something that you want to be in. Because I, I think, uh, Jorge, for you, like you, um, it was kind of a, a, a you know, a, a, a zigzagging, you know, kind of getting, getting to, uh, to where you are now. But like, I mean, there, there's plenty of times where I feel like um, kind of watching you operate, it was, it was, uh, yeah, even, even though you had those, those times of like, Oh man, I don't know how they're gonna feel about this when I, you know, when I show it or whatever. Uh, you know, it was always like, like what you were saying earlier about, um, you know, like, uh, I guess kind of, kind of being yourself and having that discipline. Like, 
you know, regardless of those feelings, it was always like, you know, just going to do it anyway. <laughs> I'm just going <laughs> to, you know, so it's, you know, it, it shows, it shows in the work and it also shows in the path. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, bro. <laughs> That's awesome, man. That's cool that people, it's, it's cool to hear that, man. Especially people that you respect and stuff. It's Validation is awesome, you know? You never know awesome. who's watching. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's cool. Make sure that you validate fellow people, you, that you really respect. Don't misvalidate, but it's, it's good to, to, to do that, you know, it's to support. Um, I have another question pulled up here. And I, we talked about it a little bit, but maybe we can get specific is, um, this is from Garnett Garcia. And he said, uh, what motivated you in the moments that were not so happy and Disney-like? Uh, like we all go through those rough patches you mentioned the importance of not giving up because there are so many people who do. So what advice would you give to those starting their journey who are bound to face some discouragement, especially minorities? <clears throat> uh, again, this is just my opinion. I love that people can want to listen to me. This is cool because I feel we were like, well, you know, because in no time you guys will be here or we are, you know, but uh, I think it's, it's, it's how, what, because like we were saying, everyone is creative and everyone is creative from the financial guy to the cook, to the cleaning bathroom, to whatever, you know, it's creative. Creation, creative is, is problem solving, right? And at some point or not, you get encouraged or not and you, you get facilitated with, uh, with whatever you call morals of energy or power, some people call it, but you get facilitated with that. So with... With me, my surroundings, like I say, like I'm, like as you can see, I'm really grateful of of my of my life and the opportunities that I had, right? Because I am aware that I'm 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 so rich, man. I'm like freaking filthy rich of black. I know that, and I'm excited. And I want to waste that. But to my point is is that how do I? It's it's recognizing that you know how this opportunity, what it means. Let's let's go to a bigger picture, okay? As an I come from Venezuela, I grew up in Venezuela. The fact that we have education, we're part of the 0.00.01%. Maybe I'm exaggerating, but it's close. It's that crazy, okay? And to do the education with what we want, because I'm assuming that you guys want to do art, it's, in, it's mind blowing. You're part of a bubble of a bubble within a bubble, okay? So that gives you perspective, a big perspective as an what is it? What is this opportunity of how privileged I have to this opportunity? You know what I'm saying? And that gave me perspective and, and drive, you know? Like I, I, saw, I saw what other people's life was, you know, too, you know? And, and, and it gives me, it gave me perspective. It, gave, it really gave me that drive, that, that value. See, I always go back to, I really value the opportunity, man. And I saw other people's and, and, and I kind of get, get helped me lift up when I saw that my worry was to get better at drawing and not seeing what the hell I got to do to feed the freaking people tomorrow in my household. And I'm getting dramatic, but if you're not aware of this reality that you guys have in this panel right here, then you, you're losing already. Okay. You need to know how privileged and how not the norm this is. And if you're like, oh, look, like my shoes, my diamond shoes, ay, 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 then, then, I mean, <laughs> problem solving is not for everyone. Being comfort, it's fine, it's cool. There's no judgment. It doesn't make you less of, or whatever, but, you know, some people like repetition, some people not. So you guys are here because you want a challenge and you want to be challenged. Because you are hungry, you want to be curious, you know, and the uncertainty is unknown, you know, so, and it's hard and it's, you know, and then the salt, you know how it is. And these days, again, all the things that I've said, I said easier said than done. Jorge, that's freaking, freaking awesome, man. There's so many times I'm like, ah, you know, but it gives you perspective. I moved, even the bad times moved. I moved. The way, the, the fact is that you can't be stagnant. You can't be why canvas i'm not inspired freaking move 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 you'll get inspired i'm sad i get fucked i'm fucking i'm doing this and my costing is sick and all that and i'm this and i'm that move 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 it's not that you don't care but just move keep moving it's being active even the bad things are 
are moving, you know? Mm -hmm. See, tangents. No, 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 that's awesome, man. We embrace tangents, man. That's, that's so great. Uh, Jorge, since you're talking about kind of moving and, and keeping that energy going, uh, we have a question from, from Raven, and she was asking, how do you keep that same energy while working from home? Like, and we talked about feeding off each other and others around us. Like, I mean, I know for you and I, like we text each other work sometimes. We try to inspire each other. All of us, I think, do that in some way. How do, how do you keep that going working from, from your room like everybody else is right now? Oof, it's a tough one, man. It's a, it's a hard one, but uh, it's, I miss it. I miss, I, I see like, okay, so I'm, we're talking like as friends too. And this is the, I always talk as friends. It's the only way we do, right? So right. It, I am, I'm, I'm comfortable in my place. I love my surroundings. My, my plants and the people that are the really close people around me, you know, I'm, I'm a safe place and I'm usually always being a long ranger, you know, but uh, I miss my community. I miss my life community. I'm a hugging person, you know what I'm saying? Now I have to rethink all of these ways. No hugging, man. So it's, it's any, and I think that visceral thing is important. Again, well, I felt like working from home and being more effective, more productive. I have no doubt. You could. Some people are, some people are not. I, I'm, I have no doubt. No more distractions. But um, that visceral touch, that visceral loop, that visceral, there's a value to it. I'm not going to be like, well, you can't do a film remote. No, man. That, that, then we're becoming stale because that's the future, you know? We got to get used to it because I think this thing, fast forward, what, we were, what was going to happen, like, in exponential Two, in three years happened what was going to happen in 10 years. Anyway, a little bit. So, como decía Bruce Lee, you got to be water. Just be fluid with it. And, and I'm trying to make the best of it. Books, hikes. I need hikes. I need vitamin D. I need to stretch. You know, I need to stretch a lot. My brain, you need to be healthy. I need to talk to my, my surrounding people that I love. That they know that I care as well. That keeps me content. That keeps me happy, you know. There's times that I'm like, I just want to go to a museum. I'm just going to want to go to, to, I don't know, camping, hugging with friends and a party and, and dance. And, you know, and, and that, I miss that. And yes, to not get longer, but yes, that's what I miss, community. That's um, awesome. I wanted to say uh, to you, Jorge, we had another question from uh, Rehab SN. Um, and she asked, um, on your way to Disney, how did you keep up your motivation to reach your goal when sometimes things might have started looking bleak? It, it, was, uh, it was that. It was, it was counting my blessings, you know? It was really, really counting my blessing and powering through it, you know? It, yeah. It, it, what, what is power through it? Like I said, don't get stagnated, you know? You got to keep on going. And that's what I'm saying. You have to really find where you, where you feel pleased, what makes you happy, you know? And it's not just a, a, um, a card, you know? Like, well, well, do whatever makes you happy. It's you need to, life is so short, you know? So you need to see where you, you, where you fit. That makes the hustling easier if you, if you are where you kind of belong for that time because we change and we can't be like the salmon all the time, like, like swimming against the current. We got to realize that there's things that don't work anymore for today that used to work yesterday. And that's the hardest thing to let things go. Sure. But yeah. change is easier said than done. But, you know. I, have a, I have a good question here that's a, a good segue. And we actually haven't talked about this enough in our panels, which this, so this is from uh, Shadrach. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Um, but uh, they asked a great question. Did you ever experience burnout uh, through your job or consistent discipline and and uh, you know I think that's something we all experience is burnout and and we all have different ways of handling it but I know Jorge like after a show you talk about vitamin D and hiking and stretching and all this stuff you kind of take all that to the next level you go home can you talk about like the importance of, of recovery yeah it's, it's a marathon and for me it's just habits and because there are no rules right it's just patterns patterns so um, that pattern has worked for me and I try to you know change it and change it but uh, like I go to Venezuela a month and a half a month-ish you know 
And just the fact that I get that privilege, you know, too, I'm like, you know, no one, everyone gives me that flexibility. It's because I scratch their back and they, they scratch my back. I work my ass up and then I go to recharge. And, and especially what we do, right? I mean, everything, but what we do, what, what, what do we say that we do? We do, we give the illusion of life, right? And, pe- and a lot of people don't live because of the discipline and that's where the balance is, you know? I don't think uh, you got to live a lot. The balance is not just like an every day. I think it's for moments, uh, maybe a month or two months a season, you have to hustle, sprinkle fun times, sprinkle living, and then you live, woo, 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 inspiration, and you go back to executing, you know? So that's the way I kind of see it. We say we give the illusion of life. If we don't live, what life are we going to give? We just give things. It's not original. We're just animating and doing art that we've seen, which is fun. You know, what we do is pretty much a compilation of things that we knew and we make it our own. But to make it our own, we need to, we need to live. We need to, I tell all my students, because by the way, I, I teach in Cal Arts. I always wanted to do teaching Cal Arts and I couldn't afford it. But now I, I mean, I always wanted to go to Cal Arts, but now I teach. And I tell my students too that uh, you got to go out there and, and, and be happy and, 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 and get hurt and, 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 and fall in love and, and, and be uncomfortable and fight. And you gotta, you got to experiment the, the, the emotions, you know, to, to get to the content, you know. So does that make any – does that make No, any? no, no, no. That's awesome, man. <laughs> that, that's awesome. I, I know, like, after we finish a movie and you go to Venezuela, you, you send me pictures from, like, your, your – and I forget the name of the mountains. You can jump in here. The, like, the mountains from up. The You're point, at the, yeah. yeah. Yeah, sorry, what's the name? The one, the the, the Puis, yeah. The Puis, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, and you're you're up there, you're with family, and you're sending me pictures from back home, and it's uh, it's awesome. I know after every movie, you and I talk, and you're like, yo, do you think two months is too much to take? And I'm like, what about three? And we we just... (laughs) Yeah, you you will do the same, I remember. I mean, uh, every time we talk about that, to the point that we're like, no, this is is right. This feels right. Mm -hmm. It's still right. Time goes fast, you know, and, and yes, it's collaboration. There's an individual journey, but, uh, but, but but life is cooler with people. (laughs) Uh, 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 Kiyopana, um, asks, how did you know animation was your thing, quote unquote, uh, since the field is filled with so many positions in art and story? And would you ever consider trying different stuff? Always. You need to try all, all of it, everything, you know? Like, uh, like for example, and I mean, I'm, I'm, we're not, I didn't want to talk much of the studio or anything, but we're doing, but uh, for example, Disney, I'm saying Disney, the studio, as, because I work there today, it's not my identity. And it can't be your identity, as in any kind of identity, you know? So for me, uh, as an artistic identity, even though I'm just recently comfortable for me calling myself an artist, because it felt super like pretentious, but I get, you know, I get my living out of it, you know? So I, 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 I collaborate with all, all kinds of, of people, you know? Like I collaborate with other um, uh, um, like teams outside. It yeah. could be animation, you know? It could be live action. Uh, uh, you know, it could be, but everything has to do with telling a story. I love learning how to tell a story because I grew up, that's, that's, that, it goes back to, you always knew it was animation. I always knew that I loved animation, but I, 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 I always knew it was movies. I love telling a story, you know, mm-hmm. the, the whole craft of it. It happened to be that I, little by little, I realized that I could I have a facility of animating because it's, I feel animation is all the arts in one, like, you know, they, they, all, they always say, you know, mm-hmm. I believe that you, 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 I could do drawings and I could do gestures, but then I could do painting because of the color, because in my head, I didn't know who put the colors, but I knew animation. Then I could do acting. Okay. I like acting. Okay. So we can do that. Like I, I want to be a sculptor, but that's like a, you know, so for me, learning animation, you have to learn all the crafts. Uh, again, I'm, we're not saying that we're masters in any specific one, but I don't agree that masters of all masters or none. I mean, you have to be aware of at least a little bit of all the, the discipline. And yeah, 
I collaborate with different things uh, outside the, the, the studio to try to keep me excited. And I don't want to give uh, for granted this creative energy that I got because I don't know how long we got. So. All right, that's, that's a perfect um, answer. And it kind of, it works as Alexander asked a question. Do you ever worry about compromising your style when you are trying to work on a project? And I think all of us go through this because we work at studios and, and we, you know, we have to adapt to the project, but you, you are constantly like writing a script or taking color theory classes or sculpting or, or, you know, you're, you're always finding that next thing. Is that how you uh, continue staying passionate about your own style? Uh, yes. Yes. I mean, you, 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 I think you should always inject your style in, in whatever you're working. Even if it's someone else's vision, someone else's style. But that's what, you, they, they, that's what they bring you in for what you can bring, you know? And that's where you make yourself valuable. But that's one of the hardest things that I've learned in, in, in being in the studios was recognizing how to translate this thing for people to listen, okay? It's like, the, the, remember I was telling you, like, if the more specific I am, the more original I am, but the less people listen to me. You. you know what I'm saying? So how can you be politically good? Politically good means not uh, being a liar. Don't misunderstand me. It just be politically good as in, like, let me tell this thing in a way that you can, you can understand it. So that's the hard thing because it's very abstract what I'm saying. Where do you make the compromises? Where do you make the translation without compromising originality? So that's the hard thing. But, yeah, that's how I felt outside like writing and shooting and, and designing and storyboarding and I, and I had my this is crazy by the way I don't know if I told you this guys but I had my first story uh, artist credit in Disney next to uh, Joseph okay that's surreal you know what I'm saying because I did storyboarding and stuff like that you know and they're not Joseph's storyboards I think you can tell from who, which ones they do who you know but um but it's also he's being out of the comfort you know that's the thing. How can you not try that? You already don't know it. How can you not try that? You already don't have the job, you know? So, like, trying. And here's the thing. Like, I feel, you're like, yo, Jorge, what the heck? Come and chill out. But I feel <laughs> so blessed about the quality of artists that approach me to collaborate with them. It's, it's addicting. I, I, I feel, I'm like, like, how can you, I want to do it all. Which you have the, you have the danger to a risk, you know, for that. But you, you know, Jorge, like you're, you're. It seems like you're always doing something. And and I remember, like, it's probably a year ago now that you were, you and Jeff Gibson were shooting a skateboard video, yeah. and li live action. And Jorge came to like a few of us at the studio, and he's like, "Hey guys, I need some help with the animation in this video." And we're, I think we're all like, "Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. When do you need it by?" This was a Friday. And you said, oh, Sunday, we need, we, need to have, <laughs> we need to have this thing fully animated by Sunday. And, yeah. But I love that you're just like, you're scrappy and you and Jeff teamed up and you're just like, we're going to figure out this live action thing. We're going to make it animated. And you guys got it done <laughs> by Sunday. You know, we did it in seven to 10 days. We, we shot it and we animated it, man. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, I mean, so, I mean, um, what do you think, Jorge? Like, um, coming up on uh, eleven forty-five. But um, what do you, what do you, what kind of advice do you think you can give um, to people that you know, like um, up and coming, up and coming artists that want to do what you do and break into the industry? <sighs> what I said, what you said, which is a great one. Yeah, it, it's it's. Courage and, and discipline, man. It's God, it's education, you know, it's ever changing. Be open minded to be wrong. Leave your ego aside. Don't be sumis, you know, it's different from being respectful and <laughs> being an apprentice of life, you know. That's the thing. Like, I believe, like, four people that are here, you know, all of you guys, you know, we, we are. We're not, we don't fake home. We just know that we're surrounded by people that know so much, you know? It's not like, oh, they keep going with it. No, no, we just recognize that. And that's part of the things that fuel us, you know? Am I part of this game? What? You know, like that, that thing, recognize that, you know what I'm saying? Take, jump in every train and give it to whatever, all that you can, you know? 
and count the blessings, basically, you know, and um, be cool, focus on the essential, you know. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there was something that, like, uh, someone recorded already, be an apprentice of life. And I yeah. think that's totally true, man. I mean, like, for me, uh, it, it, it's totally true. Of just kind of, like, whatever stage you are in your career, you could always learn something more, right? You can always be a student of something more, you know, at every stage. Got to. And I kind of feel like that's what you do, like, in every, like, sort of phase of your life, you know? I'm appreciative, man. I'm, I'm aware that I, I'm, I'm, I'm a rich I'm a fortunate person, you know, of life, and, and I don't want to miss a thing. Like, I don't, so. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome, Brian. We're, uh, dude, we're so happy to have you here, and I'm proud of you, man. I'm proud of, like, yeah, this, this group here, actually, all of you, 